my name is Avi Yashin. This is, you guys all know John. Okay. Um, Wall Street profits are $22 billion a year. Many of these profits are kind of this 7% tax on the back of all of the wonderful entrepreneurs uh, in this country. Um, and our job is trying to build a little system. Um, there is publicly available data. Crunchbase is a database of about 40,000 startups. It's very sparse. There's almost nothing in there. You can see very, very large categories. There's maybe 15 or 20 categories okay, across these 40,000 startups. There's uh, a little bit of funding information and some basic location information. That's it. Uh, FINRA is a database maintained by, I think, some federal agency, some three-letter agency. Uh, if you are an institutional investor, if you are a private wealth fund, if you are just a wealthy individual, you must register with FINRA. And the data here is equally as sparse. So when we initially looked at these, at these two data sets trying to match buyers and sellers, there was very little um, that we could use to, to match these guys. All right? So how do we match them? Using NLP. Uh, there's a lot of really, really nice new NLP tools out there. Uh, Skip thought vectors, which is very similar to uh, word to vec It's a recurrent neural network implementation of, uh, of a nice paper that's maybe five years old. Text blog is a Python library that lets you do sentiment analysis. Uh, there's a couple of interesting tools for topic modeling. I think the most interesting is called <coughs> cortical.io, which is an open source um, uh, API that you can, that you can use. Uh, so here's our problem, right? We have about 50,000 websites. When we're running on one machine, when we want to scrape these 50,000 websites, we were doing about 25 sites an hour. This right? is my poor MacBook Pro, you know, like not not really a strong machine. Yeah, no, and, and whenever uh, John like closed his laptop or like his machine crashed, we, we would lose. We so, you know, this would have taken us three months to do. This was kind of unfeasible for us. And if you look at AWS, the prices are kind of ridiculous. These are for, you know, just small eight-core machines. The monthly costs were $500 uh, a month. Um, you know, I just sold my company, but this is still kind of expensive. The benefits um, or, or the, the solution to this were spot instances. So what AWS lets you do is uh, buy off-capacity servers for about 10% of the price, all right? So this was great. You can, you can get these, these really beautiful servers for you know, a couple hundred bucks an hour. You're talking about 40 cores, 200 gigabytes of memory. If you want to build a nice little H2O cluster, right, these are great. You can spin up a dozen instances, run them for a few hours, spin them down. It's, it works really well. Um, so we were actually able to use spot instances and scrape all 50,000 sites for under about 100 bucks which is great. The risks of spot instances. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but John and I, if we looked panicked about an hour before this presentation, it was because spot instances can go away. Amazon says, oh, there's no more capacity. I'm shutting down your server. They send you a little two-minute warning, and then it's game over. And this actually happened to us right before this presentation. So we had to rebuild the entire application in like under an hour, but we have GitHub, so we were OK. Uh, by the way, this was the first time I have seen a spot instance go away in like three months. I've had this server running for months and months and months. It's just someone knew that I, we had a presentation, so they had to take it away from us. Mm -hmm. All right, so to speak briefly about, so this whole problem of scraping all these websites and getting them all with the spot instances, we can, we can start spinning up all the scrapey spiders. Scrapey is the technology that we used for the scraping. I'm not going to go too in-depth on this, but Scrapey is an absolutely fantastic tool that allowed us to build this sort of workflow that was going on asynchronously, these two sides from one another. So we had a database in the middle of it, Scrapey doing a lot of work. We have all these instances, all these Scrapey instances, uh, uh, Scrapey yeah, instances on the uh, actual instances themselves going up at the same time. So we're going out to the websites from a list of websites we have from Crunchbase and from FINRA, all those sorts of things. We scrape them, read them to the database. At the same time, we're doing analysis on the other side of this. So this was, I would say, the first part of our problem starting to get solved. You know, getting all this text, getting all this analysis, putting it in a central place. 
And the next part of it was, well, doing something with it, which we're going to get into a little bit more now. Yeah. Uh, so this is our, our little AWS instance. Uh, we love BYOBU, which is a nice uh, shell. We love HTOP. We love Slurm. We love command line tools. The first tool we looked at was skip thought vectors. Um, skip thought vectors are nice. They, they, they came out of uh, Facebook AI research. If you guys have seen the demo of uh, Frodo, of uh, Lord of the Rings, where they, they kind of uh, write out the Lord of the Rings story, and then they ask the computer, like, where's the ring? At the beginning of the story, the ring's in the Shire. And then, you know, Frodo takes the ring, and Frodo goes to the Shire, and, you know, Frodo's at Mount Doom, and you say, where's the ring? And it says, well, the ring is with Frodo, so the ring's at Mount Doom. All of that is available. Facebook open sourced it. It's uh, skip thought vectors. It didn't really work for us, because we were trying to get more of a, uh, the, 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 the fingerprint the fingerprint, the kind of context that was used on the website. So understanding the text on the website didn't really work. Also, if we wanted to apply skip thought vectors to, like, say, 50,000 words of text from the website, it would have taken us you know, two months of horsepower. Uh, text blob was great for sentiment analysis. You can do really easy sentiment analysis. Uh, it's, it's literally a one-line uh, thing in Python. But that also didn't really work for us. You know? see kind of which companies were the happiest and which companies were the saddest, but it didn't really work for much. So then we got to Cortical, which is the thing that Avi mentioned earlier. So Cortical is a really, really great te technology. came out of a company called Numenta, right, um, from a guy named Jeff Hawkins, who does a lot of work in AI. And what the Cortical.io uh, API allows you to do is feed in a body of text, corpus, and then build something called sparsely distributed representation of that text. Now, the advantages of an SDR, sparsely distributed representation, are many. Um, normal representation, when you're trying to map words to an actual representation that can be compared with things like Euclidean distances and whatnot, you would go with a dense representation. But a sparse, a sparse representation, in short, allows you to say things, well, as you see, like Jaguar minus Porsche equals Tiger, that's sort of an end result thing. But the chances of there being actual good overlap um, between two random SDRs, as you call it, is so low because it's so sparse. I mean, we can go into this. There's papers we can send you if you're interested in this. But the properties of the SDR are such that if these bits, that's you know one versus zero, overlap between two representations, the chances of that happening randomly because it is so sparse are absolutely minimum, uh, minimal. So this was our ticket. We found cortical and we started plugging in our text because this allows us to start actually doing some robust analysis and comparisons <laughs> of bodies of text. So another nice thing about SDRs is uh, they work really well on noisy data, hmm. right? There, I mean, there are, again, proofs, mathematical proofs that we can talk to you about another time that show how uh, this representation is still robust to noise. You know, you can... And this is also, some people think, um, very similar to the way cortical columns in the human neocortex work. So this is what the actual website that they have um, looks like. Plug in your source text, um, and you get out a resulting fingerprint, which is this SDR, the sparse representation. So again, the chances of, with those keywords in, this representation looking like an unrelated one are very, very minimal because of how sparse this is. So with that sort of thing in mind, we decided to use cortical.io to build a Flask app um, that I cannot click on. Not clicked on. It's a cosmetic underline. Probably already up, isn't it? That's yeah, okay. So here's our Flask app. Called it M3, M cubed, um, because. So what this does? So we have the Scrapey backend um, that originally scraped all of these different venture capital firms, um, and now we want to allow a user to go in and enter their startup or a description of their startup and say, okay, generate a fingerprint for me. Tell me what venture capital firm is most similar based on these SDRs and taking the SDRs and doing things like cosine similarity and Euclidean distance. So we're talking about real actual metrics here with these SDRs to do those sorts of things. So you can go in here and you can, let's take Avi 
Uh, what is it? KaplanCleanTech.com. By the way, if you enter your website into this and we do not have the text for that website in our database, we will go out and scrape it. It might take a little while, but we will do that for you. So uh, this one takes a little while because scraping is intensive. So we already have this one in our database, so we'll give it a look to see what happens. Now, what, what's, what's going on right now is we are uh, building a sparse uh, distributed representation of the Kaplan Clean Tech website copy and comparing that to the copy of the 50,000 uh, FINRA registered uh, websites. Right, right. And you get results. So this results page is not the most glamorous thing yet. This is, you know, something we're going to continue spritzing up. But the basics, the core of it is there. So right here, that is for Adi's uh, old uh, clean tech company the representation, the sparsely distributed representation. And then, based on Euclidean distance and cosine similarity, we've got matches. They happen to agree in this case. So, we went into the database, went through all of the venture capital firms we had with all of these fingerprints, and we compared it using these metrics and came back and said the smallest distance between yours and the venture capital was 0.223, it's between 0 and 1, and that is constellation.com. I could pull up that website and show you what it is. Kaplan Clean Tech is a clean energy company, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can speak to that better than I can. Clean energy company is great. Clean energy company. They teach people about you know, solar panels. And... Yeah. So when you pop into the portfolio of Constellation.com and see what sort of companies Constellation.com, this venture capital firm, has funded, you do indeed get, and you can check this, because this will also be available, this tool, you can check that all their portfolio, a lot of them are clean energy companies, a lot of them are solar companies. So this allows you to cut out, uh, you know, cut out the middleman, find your pairing for you. I, I, I wish I had this tool when I was selling my company because, first of all, there's no category for, you know, solar education companies, but using this tool I can get a list of 100, you know, FINRA registered active startups that are investing in my space and I would have just went down the 100 and and pull them from top to bottom. Right, right. I mean, I, the day we started getting this truly like robust pipeline working, I actually remember I told you about Constellation.com and showed you, and you're like, you, I think you said exactly that, like, I wish I knew about this. So, you know, it's doing real things, and it works, and it has real results, and we're excited about it. So that's just a brief demo. Um, we didn't go into the scraping because it takes a little while, but um, that gives you the idea that we're going to keep expanding and adding functionality, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what other things could you do with this, for example. So, let's go back in. How do I maximize this? I can do all the other stuff. Can't maximize a PowerPoint. Upper right. Where is it? This is. Is it this guy? Yeah. Oh, so this, is, this is our last slide. We'd like to apply the same technology to other sectors. There's databases in the, in the PR world where people spend a lot of money to say which reporters are talking about you know mobile payments right so Cision, Focus, Meltwire these all cost thousands of dollars a year we think we can duplicate that functionality if not improve on that functionality with this free open source tool go to our github all the code is available there for anyone to use um, mining public listings for asset-backed securities right we need to find lists of you know, any sort of recurring asset that you'd like to securitize, book <coughs> recommendations, legal text, as long as you have two databases where you're trying to kind of match buyers and sellers, uh, the product, this, this type, and text, this should work. Um, yeah. Oh, it also works across languages. One of the nice things about the Cortical.io SDR is it's language agnostic. The concept of a car or a Jaguar or a solar panel is the same uh, wherever you want in the country. So it works really well for global investors. Right. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. I asked a question about it, but, um, Do you have any plans to make the label data? Do you know which portfolio we We would love to do that. So we, we were just talking about We were that. just talking about that today, yeah. Before AWS pulled our spot instance. Uh, we would love to build a model using the text data as well as the, you know, the little data that Crunchbase does give you. The other thing we'd like to do is for every VC or investor, uh, find their portfolio of invested companies, which does exist. Crunchbase has that. It is public. 
and find kind of the, the centroid of the invested SDRs and have that represent the investment company instead of having the investment company's website. And to I think to your points as well. I mean, um, I entirely lost my train of thought. You were asking about um, the hit rate and things like that. That was it. Yeah. So I mean, we can go in with some labels on this and see how well we performed in the past when we supplemented with the FINRA data and whatnot, and see how many of the you know in our top ten recommendations for a given startup um, was one of those ten the actual venture capital firm that actually funded the startup. So we can start seeing what our success rate is and improving from there. And it's a great idea, something we're very interested in. Oh, so Angel was I mean, wonderful. You know, but they have, uh, I mean, they have to request for their API, but they limit the calls, I think. Yeah, we would love to look at um, uh, Angel List, and there's, there's one or two others also. But yeah. yeah, they're doing a lot of stuff right now. They seem to be more proactive in developing their presence and ventures. Definitely.